First thing is you want to have an objective for why you're burning. Mm -hmm. um, in case today we're trying to reduce the understory competition, uh, make the area a little more manageable, improve wildlife habitat hopefully, improve it aesthetically as well as recreation wise. So once you have your objective in mind, then you look for day of burn conditions that are going to be suitable for your burn. Uh, today being on campus, with the buildings that we have to the south and the east, we were needing a southeast wind in order to burn. Um, so this is really the first day we've had in a few weeks to make that happen. So then once you decide your day of burn conditions, you come out, you want to create some safe space with your fire. So we set a backfire, um, which is set into the wind, creates a little bit of space, and then we're able to run larger strips of fire and burn a little more quickly and burn a little more intense. This control burning benefits forest landscapes, ecosystems, wildlife. Um, people for hunting perspectives need it, uh, again for that wildlife aspect. If you're trying to do natural regeneration of certain species, it needs to have fire happening on a fairly frequent basis. So it's just most, again, the southern ecosystems about frequent fire. So we're just trying to bring back what's naturally happened. There's a so a tree dynamic, there's a, basically a wildlife dynamic, and there's even a human component to it. Um, so uh, forestry wise, for instance, longleaf pine uh, needs it to regenerate. Uh, wildlife uh, species like red cockade woodpeckers, quail, oh, gopher tortoises, I uh, appreciate it also. But also a human dynamic, it's very important because uh, the aesthetic beauty and also the ecological significance of it is very important to us. Hopefully, people dressed properly for it, so it should be in no mix, something I am not wearing today because I've given it out to the students in the forestry class. Uh, so you should have hard hats, steel toed boots, and then knowledge of how to prescribe fire as well as knowing where safety zones are at. So if something does go wrong, you know that I can get out either this way or that way and reach someplace that For me, I'm definitely interested in restoration and conservation work, and uh, fire restoration is a very key, important part of that in the southeast, and so I've taken a very, very keen interest in it. Um, so I've taken multiple classes on forest management. I've taken a prescribed fire class. I've also taken a longleaf ecosystem class, and a lot of those um, culminate into kind of the overall knowledge base that we, why are we burning, what, is, what, what are you trying to accomplish, and what are, what are our objectives here? Um, because development of cabins has been a little more difficult to burn than it would have been in the 40s and 50s, and we're trying to bring that back as well as get the campus comfortable with burning. Um, there are certainly a number of issues with smoke and sensitivity of various pieces of equipment around here. But again, there's probably few other schools in the southeast that you can burn as frequently as you can here at Auburn. Um, and it's unique to be able to burn on campus in a setting like this. So this is just absolutely, in my mind, an incredible learning opportunity for 